It's True again. Uh, we got another episode of Cafe Yocto featuring the FICOR AM64X system on module. Today we're going to be diving into a Blink example with direct register access. Um, so this is like the fastest way of controlling a GPIO in Linux. We're going to have other videos covering other ways of doing this. But um, essentially a Blink program is the hello world's uh, is the hello world of embedded development. It's going to be a good jumping off point for doing more complex things with hardware. So let's get into this example. Um, the first thing I'd like to do in order to control an LED is I would have to identify someplace I could control the LED. So the way that FiTech does that is we generally bring out these pins that are good for prototyping. They're unused here typically in the default reference carry board. For example, you wouldn't want to control a pin that's being used for ethernet. The kernel is already reserving some of these pins, so that's why it's a good idea to target the pins out here. Um, to be really thorough, you'd want to double check that the pins aren't used in the kernel itself. I've already gone ahead and identified a pin that isn't. Um, that will be covered in another video. It's gonna be a little out of scope today. But let's say I want to plug in something here, which I've already done with my LED and resistor. This is the X27 expansion connector. Let's go find that in the schematic. We know that that was the X27 expansion connector via the silk screen on the PCB. Uh, in our schematic, we can just go ahead and search for X27. Go down to that section. Now let's take a look at the pin I happen to pick. Again, you, you could do this process with any of these. You'd also have to just double check in the kernel. I'm just going to grab part of this, the net name. Uh, it'll overlap with the watermark, so it kind of gets strange. So if I search the document for that net, we can click around and find all the instances of it. Looks like this signal is actually brought out in a couple places on this expansion connector. Uh, that's typically done because we're trying to support uh, potentially multiple expansion boards that can be plugged directly into this. Um, those are kind of offered as references to expand the functionality of the development kit. Uh, more reference schematics for any of our customers and developers working with our hardware. Um, so anyway, we're going to be targeting GPIO 018 here at pin 8. Um, it's okay that it's brought out to two places in this case. Uh, continue to follow along. It looks like this pin is also used at boot, but that's okay. Uh, these pins are just pulled at initial power on to determine the boot mode. Might have another video on that topic specifically. The feature, leave a comment down below if uh, if you have any specific requests on the type of co to uh, content that you'd like me to cover um, in regards to embedded development of FiTech hardware. Uh, so anyway, this pin will be free to use after initial power on. It's just that, that initial point in boot that these are going to be pulled, and then these level translators, U58, U57, they'll actually get turned off. So these pins are effectively disconnected from this circuit. Um, so that we can we can use this once Linux is up which is no problem. Continuing to follow that pin, looks like we get to the SOM connectors, uh, pin C1. Let's follow that over to the SOM schematic. Uh, now, these signals aren't always going to have the same name in both schematics. J we'll try to do that the best we can. Sometimes we make choices of um, laying out more functionality that this pin can take on, if, especially if it's unused. Uh, so grabbing this uh, signal name and then looking for it in the SOM schematic or vice versa won't always work. So I always grab the pin of the SOM connector. Those SOM connectors are how the, um, the SOM interconnects with the carrier board. So that was pin C1. Let's go track that down. So yeah, it did change names for the most part. This is the first part of the signal is the same. Grab this guy. Let's search for this now. Looks like I got three instances of it in this schematic. Uh, so here looks like we have another uh, a weak pull up. This is something you have to consider, right? If we were going to mux this input or this GPIO as a input, um, the uh, you would have to consider that when wiring up your button. For example, there is already a weak pull up on that pin, so that'll affect how you use this pin going forward. Um, and this is these pull ups are this is actually setting the default boot mode of the SOM. So if you don't override it on the carrier board with these with the boot switches we're just looking at here. Uh, the default boot mode is already set on the SOM. It's typically for the onboard flash, the EMMC on the SOM, and that's typical of production systems. So yeah, just note that there's a pull-up, and then continuing on, looks like we get to pin U20 of the process. This is U1, so this is actually the AM6442 processor on the SOM. And let's grab that processor ball name. 
U20. Oh, actually, this is the ball number, GPMC 083. That would be the ball name. Uh, along with these schematics with embedded development, you're also going to need the technical reference manual and data sheet for the processor. These are going to be important to find the pin muxing and capabilities of the hardware subsystem. So I'm going to go ahead and search for U20 in the data sheet. Uh, and let's go see what it has to say about it. So U20, that's the ball number. The ball name, GP, GPMC083. So it looks like we have the correct entry that we're looking for. So a couple things to note that pad config, the register for controlling this ball is pad config 18. We have the register address for that. And then we also have a breakdown of all the different functions that this pin can assume. So we can see here boot mode three, this is just the bootstrap occurs right at power on. It's not really a mux mode of sorts. It's just happening at boot um, by default. And then what we want is GPO, we want to control the GPO. So we'd have to mux this pad as GPO 0 underscore 18 with mux mode 7. Uh, the reason we have to mux, actually that's a short uh, form of multiplex. We have to multiplex these pins because the processors are packed with so much functionality and it's all on a finite footprint. We have to pick and choose what we bring out at any given time. We can't bring everything out all at once. So mux mode 7 is what we want. Let's go and look at our code. How would we write code for this? Well, in order to memory map um, that register into virtual memory and then assume control of it, we'd have to write a, a program something like this. Uh, this is a memory management header. It's going to define some macros, uh, map shared, for example, and it's going to give us access to this memory map function. Uh, a couple others like file control, that's for opening the dev mem. This is how we actually access memory uh, in user space. And then uh, time, this is for my delay function. Yada yada. This is a really the important juicy stuff. So I identified GPO 018 there in the carrier board schematic. Well, I need to find how I can control the GPO 0 module. Instance 18 here, there's a bunch of instances in each GPO 0, uh, GPO module. There's a number of modules too. So taking GPO 0 module, let's go take a look in the technical reference manual. Search that. Don't have to search for very long because it's actually very uh, early in the document here in the main domain memory map. We can see that the GPO zero is going to be controlled in this register bank from this to this. And so what we've done is we've just gone ahead and defined those here. Um, these are the same values. We have in order to run this memory map and map these register addresses, we have to have the GPO zero module register bank size. So we just subtract the end from the start. We get the size of the bank. Um, GPO zero port is going to be just the one shifted over 18 times. The reason for that is let's go take a look at GPO zero. I've already had it bookmarked. So again, this is the base address of GPO zero that we already identified. Each of these offsets is going to have um, you know different different things that you can configure or control in that GPO zero module. Let's take a look at dir here, dir. So. Um, each GPO zero module, and again, there's this is essentially copy and paste the subsystem. So there's a number of them, and they're just controlled via uh, offsets to that address. So these are very similar, GPO zero and zero one, just different offsets. Um, if I want to control GPO zero underscore zero, I would do that with the zero bit. Uh, if I want to control Z GPO zero eighteen, which we identified, that's what we want, right? I'm just looking at this again, GPO zero underscore eighteen. And we saw that again in the MUX mode that we can get this GPIO zero on this particular processor pin. Uh, that would be with bit 18. And so, note, taking another note here, if we clear the bit at bit 18, GPIO zero module, the DIR register, uh, we could configure that particular instance as an output. We can configure as an input if we write one there. Um, now, go back to here. That's why we've done it this way. We're going to be able to shift that one over as an 18. And then since all of these registers are kind of the same in terms of how they control those instances, this that mask, um, this one shifted over, this mask would be f uh, useful for doing a number of things. Now, in order for us to blink an LED, we have to do a number of things to that GPIO. We have to set the data. So we have to turn it on and off. We can do that here in the data and clear offset registers. Um, see, yeah, we're in the clear data right now. So this is the actual physical address. 
what we can do is we can just define the offset and just add it to these the base address to give us the physical address of that register, right? Um, and so we just define the offsets here. Diving a little further into the code, we're gonna uh, set up some pointers for that memory map. I defined a delay function, again, using that time macro clocks per second to do that. This, so this, this is a millisecond delay. So if I do a thousand down here in my while loop, it's a, a one second delay. So I'm essentially doing like a one hertz blink frequency. Um, okay, so jumping forward into main, we're gonna open that dev mem memory file, and then we can use that file to memory map our GPIO address uh, into virtual memory, and that's done like this. And then once we've done the memory map, we can just go ahead and close the file. The memory map is still gonna be active. Uh, with the base address mapped, now we can add our offsets to set our um, pointers to these other registers, uh, and now we can access these directly. Now here's where we start changing and controlling things. So what I'm doing here is taking that direction address and I'm ending it with the opposite of the mask. So effectively, we're clearing bit 18 with this line. What does that do? So we go to the direction address register, or direction register, and see that, yeah. If we set that bit 18 to a zero, it's an output. So that's why we have to clear the bit. Now, if I set the 18th bit to one here in the set data out, this will actually, this line is gonna turn the GPIO on and clear data again at the same same logic we're going to be turning it off and so on off every second i've gone ahead and already copy and pasted that into my terminal oh and it looks like i built it before too but let's take a quick look at what that looks like just to prove it's the same file here go ahead and close it let's compile it with our gcc native compiler and i want it to be uh executable name blink that's the output compile it now we have this blink file back now if i go ahead and run this you'd think that this would work right but actually there's another step um, in order to make this happen see that led is not blinking yet and that's because we have not yet looked at the pad config the pin muxing so this all this everything in this um oh i might not have switched that camera view but um yeah so we're running that code, but nothing blinked. So now the reason is because we didn't do pin multiplexing. Everything here is uh, is controlling the GPIO module, the subsystem within the silicon, but nothing is set up such that that system, that subsystem can bring that pin, that signal out to the pin that we're targeting. And so the way we do that is we go to that data sheet again. Let's take a look at this address, the pad config. This is something we neglected to do so far. Copy that stick it into the technical reference manual. And this is just a pro tip, the way that Texas Instruments writes their registers, see this? There's a space between the first four and the last four hex. So adding that just gives you, makes your life a little easier when you search. And it shouldn't take long to find the hit. Um, this is a document is like 10,000 pages. So it's just very cumbersome. Uh, go in here. Now we get uh, a nice breakdown of all the registers that control the pad configs. Um, pad config 18, let's double check in our data sheet. That is in fact the pad config for the processor pin we want. Just, you know, sanity check. Let's go ahead and click and see what that looks like. The address should match. Now, this has given us a sweet breakdown of what this register does at the bit level. So bit 31 is locking and unlocking this pad config. Um, looks like there's a bit here for enabling the output driver. Oh, so this is this is probably need to be configured for our usage, our use case, right? Um, now this one also, this is the receive uh, enable or disable. So I would want to make sure that this is disabled while this is uh, oh, enabled um, in order to blink an LED. That's the GPIO acting as an output. Um, we got some pull states that we can configure on the pin, uh, internal pulls, Schmidt trigger, and then the MUX mode itself. So how do we check what is the existing state of this register? Well, let's go ahead and grab the register. And we can do this in, in user space very easily with this devmem2 utility. So if I just give it the register I want, 
And it's actually doing a very similar process as we just did in the Blink program. It's mapping with devmem, it gives you the virtual memory address, uh, here's the true physical address, and here's the data that was held there. Now what the heck does this mean? I like my handy dandy Windows calculator app. Uh, it's super handy, go over here into programmer mode, uh, select hexadecimal, paste this in, and if we go to the bit toggling keyboard, we can get a nice breakdown of each bit that's set in this hexadecimal value. So let's hop back over to the TRM. I want GPIO zero. Oh, no, this is actually, uh, I want the pad config. Right, we're looking at the pad config. So now we can compare very easily uh, each bit against what it does. And so let's walk it through from, from zero. So from zero, we got uh, zero through three sets the mux mode. So we got all ones, that makes it a seven. And mux mode seven, is that the one we want? Yes, we can confirm that here in the data sheet super easily, right? Mux mode seven. Continuing on, um, looks like the next bit that is set is going to be 12, 13, 14. And that is like the next setting that we actually have um, the ability to control here. And that's enabling the Schmidt trigger input. Well, I want to drive this pin as an output. We don't need that. So let's clear that bit. Pin 16, pull up, pull down. Uh, sure, you know what? Let's enable a pull down or no, let's, let's disable it. We don't need a pull for driving our GPIO. It's not necessary. So we could just leave that as a one. What does bit 18 do? Well, that's enabling receiver. Oh, so that actually is more than likely the cause of the LED not blinking, even though our code was written great. Um, so what do we wanna do? We just wanna clear that bit. So that should disable the receiver. And correspondingly, we'll have to enable the driver. And is that already done, bit 21? Looks like bit 21 is set to one. So we have to clear that bit to enable the driver. So all in all, this is actually the register that, uh, this is the value that we want to write to that register in order to control that GPIO as an output. So we can actually just use devnum2 again. I actually misspelled that, but I'm just gonna do this. We can write to the register with this W and then grab this again. Oh man, what am I doing? There we go. Get rid of the space. So in hexadecimal, we're gonna write this value to that pad config register. Go ahead and do it. And it reads it back just to confirm that it happened. Now, if I run blink, we have blinking. About one second. And that concludes blink. Hey everyone, uh, thanks for joining us on day two of our series on the FICOR AM64X Alpha 2 BSP. Um, thanks again to True for churning out another great day of content for us, and we will see you for day three tomorrow.